Hello, welcome everyone and welcome Eva to this conversation about conflict, about summit and about yourself. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Um, something I've been looking forward throughout the summit actually to have more time with you and, and explore your life and your contribution to the world as well. So very happy for you to be here and Shanti as well. Um, yeah. yeah, and um, instead of me introducing you and, and talking about all the amazing stuff that you've done, I would like to, to invite you to choose um, which parts of your life you think um, you feel that are important and that you would like to share actually in this moment that somehow guided you into the summit. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, um, I'm I'm a, a a real talker about myself. I can really go on for a long time. Great, <laughs> we have time. We have time. Two ditches editing for you. Some pre-editing, but that's good. That focus <laughs> of the summit is good. So I think that. Um, uh, the, the summit, yeah, comes from a strand of my life, which is, which started, you know, which, which has always been around really it's something that I've been, um, uh, it's very important to me from as long as I can remember is, is just people and how they work and how, um, and how they don't work. Uh, I think I have a, a kind of some sort of mild uh, autistic aspergery something in my in my uh, genealogy um, and it meant that and it and it means to some extent I, I spent a long time learning I had to learn how to do things like small talk uh, I had to realize that I couldn't do them and then I had to feel crap and like I just couldn't and then realize mm, well, actually I know people who do this really well and study them and so it, things like that didn't come naturally to me. Um, uh, you know, when I say small talk, I, I don't mean that in a, in a kind of derogatory way. I just mean that kind of ease of floating into relation with people and that, and that feeling like you can meet people where they are and make them feel comfortable. I couldn't do any of that. I could have really heavy conversations with people. Those are the conversations that I like to have. Um, but the, the less kind of the, the lighter end of just meeting people and, and making connection and feeling comfortable with each other eluded me for a very long time. So I was always puzzling about it and always thinking about it. Um, my parents divorced and when I was about six and there was a lot of unhappiness between them and also between me and my brother. So I was always... Um, looking for answers as to how people can have a nice time together because uh, especially when they love one another because it it seemed so unfair that you know people can love one another and yet still have an awful time um, and then um, uh, uh, it, it, so I went to art college um, and got in, got interested in, um, you know, how to express myself, who, who I am through art and ended up going to do a, a training in art therapy. Mm. Um, so I think I was always going to end up doing something like that, some kind of therapeutic thing. Um, and, uh, and I worked for a long time in the arts, um, but not doing art therapy, working in, with people with mental health issues. Um, in doing the arts, but really in the organisation that I was in, it was very clear that this wasn't therapy. It might be therapeutic for people, but it was an activity. It was a leisure, a leisure thing and a way of, of kind of expressing ourselves. But at, at the same time, I was, I was getting more and more concerned and distraught, really, with what I was seeing happen in the planet, happen to the planet. Um, and uh, it became less and less feasible for me to continue working in the arts in this kind of world that didn't include um, 
other species and a, a kind of attempt to change the trajectory that we seem to be on, particularly around climate change. Um, so I got into being a kind of activist and mostly through the transition um, uh, movement. So I did uh, stuff in Scotland. Um, I, I kind of, I, I'm quite a networker. I really like bringing people together. Um, so as well as uh, being part of starting a, an initiative in my own community, I was always, I was also getting in touch with other people in Scotland who I heard were doing similar things and um, kind of building a little network. Um, and eventually I got funded to do that so I could leave my, I left my, um, uh, my art and I moved on a full time into um, building this network of people who are working in their communities to wean themselves off of oil and fossil fuels and to build a kind of more resilient, better interconnected um, communities. Um, and, and two things happened during that time, uh, um, one of which was that I really didn't bring any of my inner practice, my, you know, my interest in, 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 in relationship um, or my spiritual um, kind of practice, which had, had been a strong part of my life for, for many years. None of that came into that activism. It was all about doing stuff and getting on with it and making a better world. Um, and it, I'm quite interested as to why that was. I think that it was quite multifactorial, but I think probably fundamentally it's just quite countercultural mm. to, to uh, include those things. And uh, I was already aware of, you know, kind of coming to speaking to people about, you know, taking over our food systems and changing our energy systems and doing that from the bottom up. That's already quite countercultural. And I just couldn't quite bring myself to bring that other um, side of things. Uh, and the other, the other thing that happened to me gradually as I was doing that work was I was burning myself out. Um, really quite, quite thoroughly. <laughs> I had about four or five years to do it. Um, and I had young kids and I was working way more than full time. And, um, uh, by the end of the, the four or five years, I uh, didn't manage to get my organisation refunded and was actually pretty uh, relieved about that and then ended up just not being able to work. I just, I could hardly even think. Um, I could hardly have a conversation. I was just, I had nothing left at all. And it took me about two, two and a half years to work my way out of that. And, and I came back quite different in some ways. And I guess one of the main differences was just sort of really having had demonstrated to me how important that other level is and how you can't really get away for very long, or I certainly couldn't get away for that long, uh, leaving it out. Um, I reconnected with the Transition Network and I reconnected with Claire Mill, who was working for them at the time. Um, and uh, we got together in a kind of harps gathering in, um, hang on a wee second. No. Okay. Um, and she wanted um, somebody else to help with the inner transition inquiry group um, that she was trying to kind of get me started. So um, I, I kind of came in to do that with her and, and it was part of reconnecting with transition network from that end of things, from that kind of, um, you know, inner transition end of things that meant that yeah, one of the things that we did was meet up with a group of people uh, around the issue of conflict because the, the event that we went to in Santorso actually had a massive conflict, a very messy, massive conflict at the middle of it. Um, and there was a request from the Hub's Heart Circle that the inner inquiry group um, think of some way to, to help uh, people who are in the transition movement deal better with conflict because it wasn't just coming up there it comes up 
wherever there are people, there will be conflict. Um, so, so we got together and Nuno was one of that group and we had several meetings where we were talking about the kind of thing that we could do and you know from quite early on the idea of some kind of online um, conference was was what we talked about and then um, yeah, I can't remember quite what happened but in the end Nuno took that on and said that he would do it and I said that I would support him and he came up with this framework for uh, the coming down to earth idea and the four weeks um, or five weeks in the end um, and and with a lot of the people who we interviewed um, through his connections um, yeah so huh, I told you I would go on <laughs> great that's what we want we want you to go on even more <laughs> yeah yeah okay <laughs> Um, I'm just wondering. No, oh, tell me, tell me. That's what got me there. That that was the my kind of. All right. Um, I, I'm wondering when you said that uh, you you were not bringing that that aspect of inner work into in, into what you were doing. Was there was was there were you aware of that? Were you aware that you were not bringing it? And 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 if so. Yeah, I guess it, it would be because of that resistance that, that like you were mentioning. But I, I'm I'm just wondering, just reflecting on on, on myself as well. Um, yeah, it was an awareness, or whether that's something that came afterwards when you realized how important that was. I think I I think there was an awareness that that I didn't that I wasn't interested in doing that. I didn't think that, that I I really really had that kind of um, you know that belief that transition was going to save the world but, you know yeah, I really really thought this is it and uh, as it became apparent that, <laughs> that it certainly wasn't going to do it single-handedly um, I think that was that kind of was part of what led into the, the kind of um, the burnout but there was there was lots of different levels going on for me. And so I think there was an awareness that, that the inner was, that I was resisting the inner, that I didn't, it wasn't part of the picture. It was too much to take on. People weren't interested in it. Um, I had a bit of resistance around how it was being brought. I, I found that the kind of financial model, uh, I struggled with it. Um, and so there were, yeah, there were quite a lot of different factors. Um, in there um, but I think fundamentally it was because of well so sort of from my from the, the vantage point that I have now I think fundamentally it was because it's so countercultural to do it that way um, and actually from my point of view now that's why it's so bloody important mm. it's like that's the that's the nut that we have to crack is the fact that people don't want to um, value, spend time in, wrestle with, learn about how to, how we deal both with our own um, feelings and with what goes on between us. Um, we just want it to go well and we just want it to be okay. And, um, and yet, actually the point is that we won't be able to do anything um, well or in a in a way that doesn't bring in all the trauma all the cultural trauma that we have if we don't address it and mm. um, so yeah I, I kind of have done a, a whole a complete turnaround in my uh, analysis of what's wrong and what's needed um, yeah yeah, I see. I see that you are actually so one of the. Yeah, tell me, tell me, finish. Um, yeah, and I guess uh, uh, it's something for me about bringing two things together as well. Is that because I, I, you know, it was, it was odd because I had, you know, I was doing loads of therapy and, uh, you know, and had strong spiritual practice. It wasn't like I was denying that part of myself. But in, all, but in some way I was kind of denying its place in, 
in my sense of what was needed to shift things socially. Mm. Um, so, it's a, it's a funny thing. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like there is that there is this this uh, story of separation of the two. I, I have problems with the language as well. Of, of you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to find ways of bringing those two worlds together. And by saying that, I'm already separating them into inner and outer work. And, and it's like, well, no, they're one, but ooh, it's e even trying to bring them into, into, into life, it's, it's, it's quite challenging because I, by saying those things, I'm, I'm kind of perpetuating the, the separation. Um, but then we have to work from within somehow. And I've seen that you actually are doing a lot of that. So part of the summit, the part that I found really empowering was that um, highlighting the importance of, of that inner work and, and trying to bridge that into other groups where, where this, there, there seems to be still quite a resistance. And I've seen actually that you've done some of that of actually inviting people to workshops where people are invited as not as experts, but as people and they're there together like with the climate uh, activists i don't remember for activists or scientists that you were having offering workshops for them so that they could come and talk about their emotions instead of about the science mm -hmm. um and I, i'm, I'm wondering that's that's a very hot topic for me so I'm, I'm wondering what what your experience is there how i feel that there is an enormous need but i feel that there is a really big and perhaps even increase in resistance. So I'm yeah. really eager to know what you think about that. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. It does feel like it's one of the keys to me. Um, so, the, so the experience that I had was um, um, I can't even remember quite where it started, but but um, so within uh, the Scottish Communities Climate Action Network, SCAN, um, where I do quite a lot of kind of volunteer work, um, we, I think I came up with a with a project idea that was about looking at, at what other people were doing cross sectorally, um, because I was feeling like, well, I know what we're doing in the community sector, but I don't really know what other people are doing, and surely there are people who see the the need for more urgent action within their sector and if we could get them together if we could get those kind of front runners those pioneers together um, across sectors then maybe we would also flesh out some uh, kind of um, uh, synchronous stuff that, that, that they could do together or we would flesh out some some barriers so it was actually quite a kind of practical um, project idea um, but so what we did was we started off by interviewing people um, and and they, these interviews were quite in depth. They were one to one um, and they were. Um, they touched quite a lot on people's personal vote motivation, because I guess there was that sort of sense that already that when people are in their professional role. They're often more about kind of doing what they're told, doing what their role is, and not so much about um, kind of getting upset and saying, hang on a minute, this really isn't working, or this isn't enough, or, or whatever. Um, and certainly those interviews, I think, really um, help, really um, kind of added to that sense. So when we finally decided to bring people together, um, we did, we kind of handpicked people. So we picked people who we felt were both got the need for system change um, mm -hmm. and were personally really committed. Um, and we had this, this kind of lovely event, it, slightly kind of, uh, it felt like slightly kind of truncated. There was some kind of outcome that didn't happen, but the process mm -hmm. of being in a room for those people, I think most of them hadn't been activists. They, you know, they, they, we were tackling um, climate change in one way or another because it was part of their work. Um, and I think for them to come to a, a conference that was about work, but where they were invited to come as themselves, mm. I think for most of them that was pretty unprecedented. 
Um, and a lot, you know, we had a lot of people saying things like, I've never talked like this before. I've never told people this before. Um, one or two people who knew each other from other professional contexts saying, I've never heard you talking like this before. So there was quite a lot of um, sort of uh, unexpected um, depth for people. Hmm. Um, and in the process, I really confirmed my sense that um, there's something that we do, which I think is, you know, learned through our education system, where when, you know, we move from education into work, and it's a lot about behaving well. It's a lot about doing what you're told and doing what's been expected of you. And um, I think for a lot of people, the, the challenge of really saying um, how you feel about something or of pushing back and saying, hang on, I don't think this is right, or you know, this doesn't seem to be enough what we're doing. It, it's just too much. Mm. It's something that as soon as they step out of the door, I mean, the, 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 the amazing thing about this is that we, we, our real selves are not far away. You know, our real selves are, are with our families and, you know, with our kids and our, our partners. Mm. Um, we're in our real selves, you know, every day. And yet when we go into work, very often we just, we just put them slightly to the side and we don't even notice that we're doing it, but we're suddenly in role. Mm. Um, and it means that we tend not to be so compassionate and we tend not to be so loving. We tend not to be so honest or free. Um, and, and I think there are outcomes for climate change in that. You know, you see it with, with climate scientists all the time they've got that scientist head and they're not, you know, they're only allowed to say things that they're absolutely definite about and that they can prove, even though a lot of them are totally freaking out about what's happening. They, they won't say that or they won't go on the record and say that because mm. that's not part of their professional role. Um, so we have a lot of people, you know, behaving themselves um, in the face of the biggest threats to... Uh, you know our species and others that we've ever seen um and we don't we need to not be behaving ourselves <laughs> indeed yeah i have the feeling that very often it's not only that people are not going there but in my experience at least i, I used to work as an ecologist uh before and that you you could lose your job if you became emotional about it so there was there was kind of a an implicit and sometimes actually explicit rule that your personal life so there is a distinction between your personal life and your public life or your work life and that you left that at home so any of the tools that i now find very useful for interacting with people and actually working together and and, and doing practical things were unthinkable when i was working as an ecologist you couldn't think about you know having a circle or or, or grounding before a meeting oh no way <laughs> that's the weird stuff that you do on your free time and yeah i think it's just crucial so i'm, I'm also wondering so there is that um there's a lot it's just more and more people that are aware of that and they are making personal changes but i have the feeling that we still have a very strong um it's like the systems that are in place, the establishment is curtailing that grassroots or, or that individual movement that is coming up. And yeah, yeah that's where I get a bit lost is so, hey, how do how do we allow this to, to break? And, mm. and mm. is there something um, mm. that we can do to invite that to happen quicker? Yeah. Yeah, I really think so. I mean, you know, like you say, the, the system has has massive sanctions. On us you can lose your job you know were you, whether or not you actually would if you you know you you took those steps it, just the threat of it is enough uh, and basically our system is massively traumatized we we, we all carry our own personal trauma and, and we also carry the, the personal trauma of living in a traumatized system and and i think that the the trauma i don't really know <laughs> of course i don't i i have no strong theories about where we started, but it feels like quite a long time ago, for us in the West anyway. We've had wave after wave after wave of invasion and war and 
um, you know, famine and um, uh, particularly since Christianity came in in the way that it came in, um, you know, the, 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 the whole uh, kind of, it basically is a kind of dominating mindset. Mm. And once you're caught in a dominating mindset, it becomes very difficult to get out of it. And if that also has got a very dominating spirituality that comes in and disconnects you from your cultural uh, ways of, of staying grounded, of staying in connection with the earth and one another, um, if that gets smashed often enough um, and thoroughly enough, then you're kind of, we're, 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 we're culturally adrift. We don't have the cultural forms that enable us to um, re sort of calibrate and come back into ourselves and ground and remember what's actually important. And, and so the, the, there's this, this kind of engine of, of trauma and re-trauma um, that our part of our system is just doing and it's doing to all of us all the time. Um, but Luckily, we're also all have an incredibly strong inherent um, movement towards health. So those two things are happening in in um, in parallel and in a kind of dance with one another. And there's definitely feels like the kind of the impulse towards health is is building again. I think it was really building in the 1960s. Mm. Um, Dopey's coming in that that kind of. Um, sense that things really could be different and the system came in and smashed that you know really really thoroughly and here we are there's another sort of move of, of momentum um and i yeah really i have kind of got the sense that it would be really really good to learn from the 1960s and um just you know what what happened to you know i think a lot of the very naive um social movements that were happening where where we tried where people were trying to stop wars and to to um, be more connected and more loving with one another um, and it feels like it's really really good to learn from that experience so that we we can be slightly less, less naive because there's no doubt about it that in its death throes the system will do its very best and become more and more you know that domination side Will get stronger and stronger and yet eventually it, it's it's you know it's really usual for systems to um react with physical force mm. um, against threats to their um their core way of doing things in the world which which for us is to dominate and extract um so i don't you know i don't expect it to be an easy ride you know, on the other hand, we have a whole lot of, um, you know, theory and systems and, and um, alternative ways of doing things that have been sort of being slowly built up over over decades. Um, and we have the, the a kind of much better and more refined understanding of how trauma works. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the system, is, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Because it's not any one person. There are There are people who do very well from it materially but i don't believe that they're fundamentally fulfilled happy uh beings who are who are kind of sitting in the midst of the juiciness and their growth i think they're horribly curtailed damaged unhappy people and so it's not even really working for them yeah. um, and i think we you know we may have ways of of kind of um dealing with that, you know, dealing with those with power that, that uh, we, we can do better now than possibly we could in the past. Although, you know, I, I don't know for sure. Um, and, I, and I also think that, you know, we need, there's an awful lot more work in terms of just ordinary people getting um, the, the kinds of, um, experiences that they need to have to mm. feel um, empowered and in touch with themselves and, and their, their kind of truth. Um, because it is, it's very hard to put people back in those boxes once they've come out. Yeah. Um, so, 
Okay. They've been joined by some holiday makers, so I don't know what they're going to make of me spraffing on like this. That's the call. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That kind of kind of. Um, it resonates with something that has been very alive for me recently, which is the concept of um, initiation rites or rites of passage, actually, and, and how that for some people, the pandemic now has been kind of a global initiation rite because it has had well, the people who actually got the virus feel that they have gone through a kind of a process of, of um, yeah, of, of shift inside and, and, and the time, the pause that the system has had to some degree, um, kind of allowing a process of rethinking or, or recalibrating. Um, and it's something that has been very act, very alive for me and, and that I, I, I see that it requires and what you were saying at the end kind of brought that, that vision it we require after we come out of a of a rite of passage we require a setting where we can actually move towards so when you were saying that it, it you know people get get an experience and then we put them back into the box that they were that is kind of it's not only cruel but it, it goes kind of it kind of reinforces the system more more than working against it because it gives us to some degree mm -hmm. resilience so we can cope with even more that is coming from this dominating and, and oppressive system so it's like right. how how do we bring that new story or, or that or not even a new story but how do we bring that shift or that that new setting for people to move towards instead of bringing them back into their boxes i don't know mm. yeah well i mean i think it i think it's kind of happening in lots of different ways i i started a project um just before lockdown happened and it was what we were going to do was go and knock on people's doors um or speak to them in the street through our bubble and reach into the lives of people who felt like they're different from us um and then all of a sudden we were locked down and we weren't able to <laughs> we weren't able to do that um but we found you know we found online ways of talking to people and, and ways of getting a bit outside but what we've discovered, having done like, you know, 100 interviews, was that what we have as a documentation of what's happened to people during lockdown is absolutely extraordinary. We're just reading the interviews now and they're, they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. So everybody, everybody, well, not everybody, but like 90% of people talking about, we asked them, we said, what would you, you know, once this is finished, what would you want to keep from the lockdown and what would you never ever want to happen again and people were you know talking about nature and connection with their families and time and space to breathe and you know not be so rushed all the time uh, that they wanted to keep and they wanted to leave you know the kind of people everybody talking about selfishness and um oh isolation um talking about being disconnected from one another and just how painful that had been. Um, so we, we de we, we're going to write that up because I think it's really important to remind people of how it was, so that it doesn't just um, go away. Uh, even though, you know, that wasn't everybody's experience. We spoke to very, very few people who actually were, were really frightened about their, their livelihoods, mm. that we just wasn't part of our bubble that we managed to get out of. So I'm not saying that it's the same for everybody, but it was extraordinarily um, similar for an awful lot of people in terms of feeling, um, yeah, just a, a, a enabling people to um, relax and be more themselves. So, so, so that's one part is being able to tell that story and remind people. Um, so for me, uh, the, the, the bit that I'm working, the bit I feel a huge amount of kind of juice and excitement is, is around um, looking at how we do politics. So I've been interested in like how we make decisions together for a while. And it's always, um, it's always felt strange to me that that you know we have these like lovely systems like sociocracy that are so kind of intelligent and 
take in so much into account uh, kind of have a, a an inbuilt understanding in, as to you know how, how people work and what works for them and what what doesn't and then looking at the way that we do politics um is just so much the opposite of that it's it's actually it it pushes people who are involved more into a kind of defensive dominating um frightened uh way of being and, I, and i'm just thinking hang on but we've got all these systems why aren't we using them why aren't we using for the things that are really important um and uh, I'm slightly distracted by other conversations around <laughs> Yeah, so, so for me, uh, looking into uh, our politics and, and that kind of, you know, really kind of uh, crucial, fundamental um, ways that we make decisions as a society. Um, and, and, you know, it feels like the kind of, for me, it feels like the ultimate in bringing those two things together that shouldn't be, that aren't socially allowed to be together. So politics is being big and powerful, knowing what you're doing, uh, being terribly kind of professional, um, making tough decisions. And uh, you know, that's the way it's kind of portrayed. Um, and then the, the kind of former awareness of how vulnerable we are, how hurt we can be, how totally unreasonable we get when we're in our, in our trauma, how we don't see things the way that they really are, how we, make mistakes and then won't admit it and you know all these kind of like the absolutely most pathetic parts of who we all are uh, which are really understandable as well um you know those though you shouldn't bring those things together that's like people will hate that they'll really hate that they won't they won't they won't accept that um and yet i think that's what needs to happen is that we is that we need to kind of acknowledge that we're humans and um and deal with it and deal with the fact that we get muddled up and we we get things wrong and we make mistakes and um and also that we can we can be made safe you know we can make safe contexts where we where we're honest with one another and we, um you know we own up to our hidden agendas and then we can we can make good decisions you know we can make decisions that take not only our needs but other people's needs into account and not only um you know the needs of ourselves and our families but the needs of other people and other families and and future generations and other species and you know we don't have to be curtailed by this um very very limited um uh, way of thinking that we've got ourselves into So for me, that feels, you know, uh, risky and exciting and potentially really, really impactful. Um, and, you know, potentially not, but who knows? It feels all right to try. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. I think it's uh, invincible. And also because there is a whistle. So it's not only, it's not only acknowledging our traumas and acknowledging that the, the the places that are perhaps um, a hindrance to to communication or to decision making or, or all that, but also there is a wisdom in us that we are not accessing because we 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 have this separation. We, I mean, I I I know how it works for me now. I wasn't aware of that before. Is that when I have to take a decision, very often my body has taken it, and I just come with I just come up with rational arguments to justify it, and I'm really good. I can come. I mean, it could be so logical, but the decision was taken before, and I yeah. had no choice about it. <laughs> I'm just yeah. very good, and I think this is really ingrained in our system as well. So it's like, oh, we come up with these uh, these arguments, and it's all very rational, but we are we are forgetting that there is a wisdom there that that we could access that would make things cleaner, tra more transparent and more efficient. That's how I see it. But then of course, it's like that this is also just my opinion. So, yeah. yeah. But well, no, it, feels, it feels really true. And, and there's all sorts of different sort of levels to that. And there's, the, there's that kind of personal wisdom. But there's also, you know, ways to access the wisdom of groups. 
um, you know, the way of circle, which way of cancel, which I knew, I've only come across recently. It's like, you know, when that works and it works surprisingly easily, the group starts speaking to itself and the, and the, the people within it become the different voices. And, you know, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous the, the way that it happens. And, you know, that doesn't even start uh, sort of moving into, you know, more kind of, um, sort of lyrical ritual spaces and, and uh, you know, ways in which we can tap into different parts of ourselves that, that are unconscious. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it's all like, you know, it just gets so juicy and, and um, just very, very inspiring to, to think about where, you know, the kind of places that you can go when you start to go down that route of relaxing into, um, you know, who we really are. Yeah. And also the, the kind of conflict summit takes on for me a kind of, you know, a, a, a new and much more vital uh, role too. Not, not that summit necessarily, but just that, that sense that we need to know how to deal with conflict really consciously um, and really transformatively because we're always going to get into conflict with one another. We're always going to feel different things at different times or have different parts of the truth or, um, you know, have got, have got muddled up between things that, you know, we, we put together that maybe should not be together or whatever, you know, it's like, it's really complex and, and having um, kind of conscious, um, well-resourced people who understand how to work with that and how to soothe uh, where we where, where needs to be soothed, soothed and, and to kind of bring out stuff that, that you know needs to come out it's like got, you know absolutely crucial it's that one of the people I interviewed I, I can't remember who it was but it was just lovely I was kind of spiraling down in my head into a kind of like oh you know but we we get so fucked up and we find it so hard to understand what's going on and how will we ever manage <laughs> and she was saying something like you know well but we can hold space for each other it's like not everybody is is in their kind of hurt and pain all at the same time and as we get better at doing this, we hold space for one another, and you know we can. That can be passed around. It doesn't doesn't have to rest with one person who always has to be the one who's got their shit together. You know, at different points, um, we can share it. And and I guess you know, as we do work um, together in these more kind of honest, straightforward ways, um, we get more skilled and and more sensitive and more intuitive around all of this. You know that's all there that's you know it's just it actually has to be actively suppressed <laughs> yeah to, um, to not. Mm. so imagine all the energy that we could release when when that is not actively suppressed anymore so it's like all the the hour, the man yeah. hours or, or we, human hours that are, are put into suppressing those things in corporations in media in politics could be freed up for actually doing yeah. the work so when are we starting? Uh, just yeah, yeah. Well, really soon. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does really feel like that to me too. I've, I've come back from my holiday, just going. I said, yeah. Um, this is the work I want to be doing. It feels so kind of exciting and juicy and full of potential. Um, so just yeah, no time like present. Definitely, definitely. Uh, want to be getting on with it. I saw, I came across a really lovely, just beautiful um, woman on, on Facebook who's, who's in America and she's, uh, 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 she's in North America, USA. She's of uh, Native American um, descent and she's one of, I think, a whole bunch of uh, Native American people who are stepping up to run for office mm. and they're calling themselves future ancestors. Um, and she had a little film that was made about her where she um, 
she went she fasted for seven days um outside i think outside the white house not quite sure where um but she was doing it as a kind of you know a form of prayer and as a form of um, protest and um just as a you know kind of really personal um commitment to uh, her being that path of a rep being trying wanting to be a representative for her people and the, you know her whole it was just the, the whole video was so full of just her being totally real just a real human person with you know a really difficult background with you know a history of abuse that she's she's with and that has kind of informed who she is and where she and where she is and with such a lot of kind of um just authenticity and integrity and you know people like that um i think would be amazing to be in touch with around this um to talk about you know so like just you know practically crying with how horrible politics is and it's so brave to be a person like that and willing to step into the arena that politics has become I mean, it's so toxic mm. And, you know, I, I yeah, I, I, I take my hat off to people like that because I, I don't know that, I don't know that I could do that. And, and I don't know that, you know, I necessarily have to. I don't think we necessarily do. I think there's, there's, there's a job which is about building a new system that's running alongside mm. the existing system. Yeah. As well as trying to inroads into the existing system. You're n I don't think and I could be wrong, but I don't think we're ever going to change that system. I think we, we you know, I think the, we either wait for it to collapse, which I think is coming at some point, um, or we find a way, you know, we find enough strength to actually be able to um, set up a completely different system. But it's, yeah, it's, it's a matter of timing. You know, it's where I see, um, I see it. I, I don't know. I don't know how that transition is going to happen, and it. I, yeah, I don't imagine it will be easy in whatever way that it happens. Um, but for me to to be trying to kind of create the actually live the world as I feel it needs to be feels like that's. That's the next step mm. is to be living in the world and, and, um, and finding other people who want to live it too and, mm. and joining in playing that game together because it's such a fun game. <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually the only way of living. Uh, the, it's a bit like what you were saying at the beginning that, you know, there's, there's, there are people who are successful or, or maybe even happy, I don't know, but there is a, in, in, in the actual system, but I, f I have a feeling, and this, this might be coming the wrong way out, but that we tend to become zombies where we, when we are there. So there is, a, there is an external shell that, that looks very happy and very content, but there's something inside that is missing. At least that's my personal experience. Um, what you were saying mm. about the about the politician from the US just also brings back to mind something that I, I, I have uh, sensed or, or seen in, in some of the work that you've done. And there is this idea of this fractal nature of, of change that, you know, there is the, the micro scale and the macro scale and how they kind of resonate with each other. And it's something that I, 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 I really feel it's there is a, a huge power there that the, the, the the change that we do individually and in the local scale has a has a really strong ripple effect, and it's just delicious <laughs> also to see that you are you are doing something in that direction. So I, I was quite, yeah, um, moved to see that to see that happening. It was fantastic. Mm. Mm. Hey Shanti, you just popped up. Hey. <laughs> Well, that was me popping up and saying, I'm signing up <laughs> when he said, I want people to play that, to enter the game. And I said, I'm, I'm signing up. <laughs> um, I, it's so 
it's I just was so astonished how it was almost as if you like we were somehow connected by some thread or something because um just in the Blues Cafe, just maybe like a week ago, uh, uh, we're, we were having this conversation with Ben and uh, um, I think I said almost the same thing you did like word for word, except it was like, we'd never communicated on it. And it was this idea that like, we put people into boxes. And uh, we were I was talking about the gift economy and this idea that we put people into these boxes with the systems that we have. And in doing so, we suppress them. And in suppressing them, there is this huge abundance of talents and gifts that people have that if they were actually able to reach their full human potential and unleash them onto the world, there'd be so much abundance. We'd be able to, like, we're constantly talking about these limited resources that we have on our planet that we keep on pillaging these limited resources, when we have these unlimited resources within us of our, of our talents and, and our love and our compassion and things that if we fully unleashed, we could protect those limited resources and find new ways of being with, with each other and with our planet and with the other species uh, um, and in our, in our planet. And, and um, yeah, but, but, but the systems we have just keep smushing us into these cookie cutter molds and in doing so we're like there's a lot of wasted cookie dough I mean it's just <laughs> um what well, I mean what if we called the what would we call the next thing we did what if we call it out of the box because I think that's right what you said I think once once people are taken out of the box it's really hard for them to go back in once they've seen what that's like um yeah, I, I, um, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot there in what you said. There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot to unpack there. We've lost, we've lost Eva. She's off doing, she's, she went off to, to start. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I love that resonance that, that, that just happens in, in this context as well. That, um, and I have to always go back to that beautiful concept that I think Don Hall brought into one of his interviews about the collective genius and how, for me, that has been a, a theme throughout the summit. That, and, and going back to, some, to something that Eva was talking about with the way of counsel and how you can have something amazing mm -hmm just by having a group of people together and, and not having these strict rules of what you can say or not and, and yeah simple rules that actually make that happen and and how we tend to then pick on pick up the the threads like like now like like Eva was doing with what you said before so there's this you know it's like we we we, we managed to go to a place where there is a wisdom that is not there when we are in our boxes Maybe. yeah and I think some sometimes people think, oh, like they're gonna throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I don't think that's a case. I think I think it just expands, right? Like there's all these ways of being and knowing and uh, this wisdom. There's many sources of wisdom, and it's not that like you throw out the rational brain and or, and 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 then you have to throw it out and then you have the rest. It's really that you, you, are you using all of them? Can you, can you use, can you know, can you use your cognitive side and know its limitations, understand what its limitations are? And can you use your intuitive side and know its limitations and understand what its limitations are? And can you use the collective, hmm. um, various forms of collective wisdom and do the same thing? How can you, how, how can you have this holistic way of being in this world that kind of taps into every form of wisdom that's available to us and, and, and uses it in a way that serves us for every circumstance, I suppose. Mm. Um, because I think every single time that part of it is left in your blind spot, so to speak, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Mm. Um, Hello, you're back. Yes. 
Yeah, we, we yes. were... I, I, for some reason, the internet just went off and then it came back again. No problem. Yeah, we were just... Um, just uh, There's something that I, I found amazing during the summit and, and that you kind of touched briefly on when, when, when you were talking about the way of counsel and, and how, you know, when you have a collective conversation, then you, you, can, you can really reach things that you cannot do as an individual or when we are restricted by our egos. And then how, you know, what this thing of mm. what, what Shanti was saying the other day and then it was coming up now and then there is this kind of, yeah, this collective genius that I, for me was very present during the, during the summit and, and still is there. And how, how we can unleash yeah. that uh, with, with some very basic uh, social technologies like the way of counsel or, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's extraordinary, isn't it? How, how <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not that difficult. And even that focus that bunker session that we did with them, um, their possibility management, me and Ben and, and Nuno. It, yeah, it's so nutty in so many ways. But, you know, for me, it was like, oh. so I guess what I thought was up to that point, I kind of thought, and I've been thinking about this kind of, this, this new way of doing politics, I hadn't been able to imagine that we could really bring our true selves and our true emotions into um, into our political system. I guess I'd kind of still been thinking about it as some sort of modification of what we've got. But in that session, I suddenly got this, this um, experience of the fact that of course we can. Because we can expect people to be able to say what they're feeling, and that that's not problem. In fact, it's really helpful, um, and to be able to differentiate between what they're feeling right in the moment because of something that's going on in their interaction, <laughs> and something that they're feeling because actually it's comes from way back. You know, those are those are not those are skills that you can learn, <laughs> and they're really helpful skills to um to clear communication and to clear thinking and to um you know being effective um in the world so why not expect our politicians and you know it's not probably not the same people <laughs> mm -hmm. you know a, a politicians mm -hmm. in, in a different system are going to be a different kind of people but you know i, I suspect that actually most people even if they were said, well, you know, would you like the kind of people who are politicians now to be making decisions on your behalf? Or would you prefer it was a bunch of people who are kind of emotionally intelligent and, and really in touch with their kind of empathy and their care? Mm. You know, I know from the conversations that I had, uh, you know, going door to door, not going door to door, on, you know, instead of going door to door, that so many people are um, disillusioned with politics and kind of a bit at their wits end and yeah. most people don't like the way that politics is done think that that we could do better think that there must be a better way they just most people haven't got to the point where they thought well why don't we just do it you know what are we waiting yeah. for what's what would stop us given what we're facing what would stop us because we're so disempowered because we're taught from you know, sometimes within our families, but certainly from the moment we go to school, that we don't really have a voice and that we don't really have um, the right to say how we think things should be run. Mm. Um, and most people just, they, they, they soak it up from being really tiny. And so they don't, it hasn't occurred to them that actually that's not, that's not right. We, we, are, we all need to take responsibility. We all need to do it. And actually, if we all did, not that it would be particularly easy because we're people and we're, it's never going to be easy for us just to always get along and think the same mm. things and want the same thing. But it's differently difficult. difficult. Mm. It's, it's kind of like honest. It's honestly different and, and undoubtedly way less damagingly different. Mm. Yeah, yeah. All we're going to have is 
really frustrating meetings where, you know, oh God, yeah, I just think the, the number of frustrating meetings I've been in with really well-meaning people, it, it, you know, but we can get better at doing them. It's like, it's, um, we won't get rid of being frustrated with one another. <laughs> That's, that's around. Yeah. I, think. Um, I think there's this we, level we, of, um, it's simple, but it's not easy. And um, there's also this like idea uh, that goes with that, that's sort of like, we tend to, uh, you know, that, that idea of like that whole hero's journey thing. And we sort of tend to think that we're going to get to some like destination. Mm -hmm. We're going to go on this journey and there's this quest and, we're going to get to this destination. We're going to get to the top of Mount Everest and it's over. We, we, we've reached our goal, but it's not really quite like that. It's, it's more like nature, which is cyclical. And, and it's a cycle that you're just going to have to, you're going to, each time you do that cycle, there's a little bit of growth and there's a little bit of three steps forward, two steps back that happens. And you go through the cycle again and you're going to be going through that cycle lifelong. And, um, having that awareness and understanding and that commitment to continuing those cycles. I think that's a part of it too, that mm -hmm. like, you're going to have like the type of session that you had with um, possibility management, and then you're going to have to do it again and again and again, and, and you will mess up <laughs> and it's okay. Um, and cause you know, those traumas are going to work themselves back in at some point and, and that's okay, you know. Um, you're going to have good days and bad days, and it's a cycle. Yeah, and it's so important that we remind one another of that. You know, I just had a, a, a absolutely phenomenally horrible fight with my husband again about the same stuff that we always fight about, and. And I felt I was feeling really ashamed. I was just like feeling, oh no, we're here again. And then, you know, afterwards, once we managed to kind of drag ourselves out of it, it was like, yeah, of course, of course. There's, you know, there is no shame in the fact of what you've just said, which is that we go round and round and, and those bits of us that are hurt are always going to be a bit hurt. And sometimes we'll do it way better and sometimes we'll do it really badly. But the more of us who get that and the more of us who are kind of feeling in support of one another, it's like, you know, that, that um, woman, <laughs> nameless interviewee, <laughs> um, was saying, you know, it's, it's, they'll always, you know, there's, it's, if there's someone there who can remember hmm. that, of course this is happening you know, and, and it's okay. And, and there is a bit of growth. Even then there's a bit of growth. Yeah. It's yeah, quite yeah. a different way of doing it. I really like that that remembering because I think a part of the problem that I had for many years what was that I came I, I came from that mind frame of a product oriented society where even even inner growth has a has a destination, a goal, and you get there. Um so it's like I'm doing this path because I want to be there. And it's always that I'm never in the present anymore, or I'm not, a, and I'm, I'm not saying that that has disappeared entirely, but I feel, I feel much more at ease with the idea that I'm not going to get anywhere in the sense of I'm going to be somewhere and that's it. And that has made me really enjoy the, the, the process. So I'm not doing it for a goal anymore. I'm doing it because I wouldn't be doing anything else. And I think for me, that has become really crucial to just show people that you know, there is no relinquishing because there's a lot of, you know, like deep adaptation, one of the things that we are asked of and I really believe in. So you, we have to relinquish things in, in, at this moment in time. But for me, that, it's not a relinquishing anymore because the things that, that I'm doing, or I do them out of love somehow. So it's like, you know, get, getting to that place where there is no sacrifice. It's just you wouldn't be doing anything else because it doesn't make sense or you don't feel that that feeling is not there and then yeah how how to shake the world yeah and, and it, it also kind of goes into that that moment that you and you and your husband had Ava where there was that of course that, that of course well of course that's on him and I, I and I'm, I'm wondering like if so so if we, we can do that as an individual 
and sort of let that burden go. In, in a sense, we're saying it's okay, we don't have to have that box around ourselves. We can let that go, that expectation of ourselves go. And if we do that, and we, and, and we can collectively then do that and, and collectively have this foundation of reassurance, this core of like, the love is unconditional. The love is unconditional, it's okay, it doesn't matter. We all know we're gonna go through these cycles and the love is unconditional. Imagine like, it's that energy that you were talking about, that energy of suppressing or that energy of, of um, trying to not mess up, <laughs> you know, that you can, you can um, you, that burden's not on you anymore. It frees you up to, to really go for it. Like if, if you, if that shame part never happened and you were immediately able to go to the, of course, imagine what that would have done. Imagine all the time that we spend in shame um, or guilt or anger, you know, maybe at ourselves or at others for like not having met those expectations. And like, what if, yeah, what, what if it's not that those feelings shouldn't be there, but what if they could be used for things that are more useful, <laughs> you know, um, instead of being like mired in the anguish of what is going what is natural is going to be either way we can we can like honor that honor it and see it for what it is but 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 be able to move forward in it and not be stuck by it i guess i don't know if that made any sense yeah no it's lovely <laughs> it's um, it's reminding me of something justin said he was he was talking about um I, I, you know i think that there is just that kind of um acknowledgement of of the human condition and and just kind of making our peace with it and he was talking yeah. about uh, uh, splitting the trauma atom mm. and there's something about that and um and yes we can heal from it that re you know potentially releases a huge amount of energy um if we can support one another and it, yeah yeah mm. i love that that what you said about the the, the atom of trauma mm. Mm. yeah it's a it's a lovely it's a lovely um, image for it isn't it yeah yeah and um you know i guess one of the one of the things that you get, and I think that we got, you know, from the, a lot from the, mm. the uh, coming down to earth conference was, you know, when, when that, when there's that um, reassurance that, that we, we've seen one another and that we can cope with the difficulties that go on between us that we get to hang out in the love, which is kind of where I'm feeling just now. <laughs> and where I feel like we did a lot of, you know, bizarrely online, having not met each other, but just to be able to, just to hang out in the love and just feeling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, think, I think there was a lot of skill in the way that the three of you set up this, for this to happen. It was a beautiful, safe container, which is, it's not i don't take it for granted and i i've heard from people who have attended several summits even this year and they said there was something really special about this one and that was that that was named every single time how safe people felt and how mm. how strong that container is and, and that's just really a piece of art really and no wonder i mean mm. you're artists so <laughs> <laughs> yeah Right, I think we might we might be winding down. If that, uh, unless there's some, I, I would mm. love to. If there's something that you that you feel you would like to share, um, this is your chance. Oh, the pressure, <laughs> Dita. <laughs> yes, I got to come up with that with that nugget of wisdom now. <laughs> Quick, Ava, the to. meaning the <laughs> meaning of the meaning of the universe right now. <laughs> 
Oh, no, you can you can also share yeah. how you feel at the moment. That's that would be lovely as well. Yeah. 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 No, I uh, at the moment I feel lots of love. Um, really, just lovely uh, connecting with you two again and remembering the the, the conference and yeah and also. I think feeling in touch with how simple this all is, you know, it's not, it's also massively complex and difficult and, you know, all the stuff that we've talked about. And yet there's something really, really simple about it as well. Uh, and the fact that, that it's true and that it's, and that to be, you know, living life more as ourselves is, actually in everybody's interests mm. that, that uh, you know people are frightened of different aspects of it because we've been taught a lot about how we need to you know we, we need to kind of um box parts of ourselves in that they're not safe that they're scary or ugly or whatever it is but actually as we as we have our lives as we grow older for most people, I think that, you know, you have enough experiences that, that show you that actually um, it is safe or it can be safe. Like, you know, we can create the conditions where we can be our true selves in relation with one another and that that's a really good thing. And that, and that that's how human beings are supposed to be. And I guess that's kind of Although it feels like, you know, we're, we're living in a, a big illusion. I, I've been right out of it recently on holiday. It's my ayahuasca. Mm. I'm here on Iona. I've really been away from that illusion. And it almost feels like I'm, I'm at a place where this feels more real than that. You know, mm. Boris Johnson. <laughs> You know the, the the Daily Mail. All of that, all of that stuff feels very far away. But I know how I know how how catching and and how pervasive and and uh, how real it all feels. Um, but yeah, I I just I I think that this human connection, being our full selves, being uh, you know that is that is that is actually the truth mm. and so how how can we not succeed yeah. in the end how can this not be the the right way to go this is definitely the right way to go. <laughs> i love that oh thank you so mm. much oh this is just mm -hmm. oh my heart is soaring at the moment yeah yeah mine too <laughs> yeah. thank you so much oh, so lovely to see you both and yeah, yeah, yeah and we must talk more about this and the, the, the new world really soon mm -hmm.